Well, welcome back, everybody. It is another edition of Guitar Day. New Guitar Day. And this is a Siamese twin version. I'll tell the story in a moment, but first things first, today's date is February the 28th, 2024. Normally, this would be the last day of February, but of course, it's a leap year. So we have February 29th tomorrow. So, the quick story about this guitar is, for some reason, this year has been the year of the budget guitar, and it basically started, and I mean guitars that I enjoy and that want to hold on to, so it basically started uh, with some IYD guitars that were blown out. I forget what the model number is, but it's their uh, emerald green Les Paul shaped object. They were blowing those out on uh, eBay last year. They started out in the $120 range and towards the end of the frenzy, I got a couple of them for $83 shipped to my house. And they were nice guitars. And I picked the one that I liked best and I sold the other three or four, I think, that came through my hands. So then the next guitar came along and we went a little bit lower and I think this might have been on the Monoprice website. It might have been through Amazon. I'm not sure, but they have an offset guitar, sort of in the style of a jazz master, except that this is a HSS, a humbucker in the bridge, and two single coil pickups. And the model is called the OS20. And they had that available for $71 shipped to your door. And I thought, oh, got to try it. And then it actually turned out to be a pretty nice guitar. It you know, had its own thing going, and, and it was built well, and it sounded good, and so, okay, we're on a roll. So then this new company that I'd never heard of before called Gear It, uh, I thought it was Gear IT, but everyone calls it Gear It, showed up on Amazon, and they were having a blowout of a Les Paul-shaped object for $64 shipped to your front door. I said, why not? I took a chance. I bought two of them. One of them was defective, so I sent it back. But the Sunburst one, P90 pickups, it's a bolt-on neck, which means nothing to me. As long as it doesn't fall off, I don't care how the neck's attached. So then, this week, this guitar showed up. This is a Monoprice Indio, and the model number or name is a Helix. And it's sort of a junior shredder kind of guitar. It's not really the guitar kind of guitar I would normally buy, but shipped to my door. I got this for $35 brand new. So I bought two of them. So, without further ado, and the journey, uh, FedEx made sure to keep this a mind-numbing adventure for some reason, whenever my guitars go through Billings, Montana, the barcode is unreadable and they have to replace it. It seems like no big deal, just replace it, but it, for some reason it loses a day in shipping because of the barcode debacle. But anyways, here it is. And as noted in other videos, Keep in mind that with mono press guitars, you get a pretty decent gig bag. And I mean, honestly, if you were to actually try and buy this gig bag, I'd be willing to bet you'd pay minimum $20, probably $30. So I guess I bought a gig bag for $30 and they threw in the guitar. And this is interesting. I wonder what this is a piece of plastic must be from hmm. the only plastic I can see on this is the straps oh well I'm sure it will be revealed and uh, kudos to uh, Monoprice they actually bought a tape gun for their shipping department usually when I get Monoprice guitars they're literally just falling out okay Behold, the Helix. I should have just gone for it and called it the Felix. 
The other thing I thought was funny too, I want just to mention, I've never seen this on any guitars that I've ever gotten. Caution. Heavy object. Which is sort of odd because this guitar does not feel excessively heavy at all. And FedEx listed the shipping weight at 10 pounds, so that's including the box and the dimensional weight. And a couple people that have gotten this guitar before me have commented that the guitar was in the seven pound range, so I'm not sure what it what it means. Oh, it's a satin neck. See? They didn't really put that detail in there, so that's an interesting detail. It says that it has Diodario EXT strings, coded strings. Yeah, if that's a flame, they did their best to hide it, because I don't see no flame, but it still looks pretty cool. So yeah, the uh, hyperbole, which I'm going to laugh, I'll read it to you when I come back. I just want to pop it out of the box and take it for a test drive, but the report from other people is that the fret ends are sharper. Yeah, these are definitely sharp. So the the blurb on the the action is not too bad. The blur oh these are pitifully sharp. I'm gonna take a file to this immediately before I can try and play it. The uh blurb is that their master luthier in California has held the guitar and caressed it and done his magic and therefore there will be absolutely no sharp fret ends. Well, these things are cheese graters. Just pitiful. And it doesn't necessarily feel like it's sprout. It feels like they're just poorly cut. But other than that, you know, just the switch now it grinds a little bit, so we'll have to Figure that out. Other people have talked about that too. Action's not too bad. So, anyways, I'm going to just run a quick file on this thing. Even if it gets sent back, it, it might as well go back with the benefit of having having been filed. So, we're going to go play it, plug it in, see. We'll be back, and then we'll do number two. Okay, it's now about 2.30 in the afternoon. Again, it is February the 28th, 2024. Beautiful mid to coming into the later parts of winter, although I'm sure we still have some fun coming up. And this is a new guitar day, and this is, again, the Monoprice uh, Indio, and this is what they call the Helix. And here's what I have to say about this. I played it for... Oh, a good hour. Um, I spent about 35 minutes filing the frets. This guitar by far had the sharpest fret ends of any guitar that I've ever not only owned, but held in my hands. They could have called this the lethal weapon model. If you were in a bar fight and you broke the neck off this guitar and you used the neck as your weapon, the frettings were so sharp that you'd be drawing blood. When I first picked the guitar up, fortunately, I had a very light touch as I ran my hand up the side of the fretboard. There were some burrs there that were just absolutely waiting to draw blood. Fortunately, none of my blood was drawn, but a warning to anybody... Um, I, I mean, again, I have a couple thoughts about this. First of all, this I have no idea how old this guitar is. It may be a five-year-old model that's been sitting in an unclimatized warehouse and the fretboard is shrunk. But even then, the sharpness of these frets was not just due to shrinkage of the fretboard. It was just they weren't finished. And the only reason why I even go out of my way to say something is, again, Monoprice just stuck their foot not only in their mouth, but all the way down their throat by the marketing department's hyperbole about how this guitar was 
in the hands of their skilled California luthier. And then they went down the list of specifics how each fret end was filed carefully to ensure absolutely no sharpness. I mean, you know, that's like dishonest if if he didn't do it. And clearly he didn't, or she could be a female luthier. And that just comes back to bite you. And so here's my other thought about that. And, you know, life is really has ironies about it. And one of the ironies of life is, I'll give you an example, if you are a struggling musician and you have to play the worst equipment because you can't afford to get anything better, and then if you're one of the lucky few that make it up to the upper echelon of the music industry and you're successful and you have plenty of money, then the guitar and the amp and the equipment companies come out of the woodwork and want to give you everything. But you don't need it because you have money. And the example that I'm going to apply to this is that when you're talking about an entry-level guitar, which this is, there's certain things about a guitar that you have to get right because the person that's going to buy this is not going to be guitar tech savvy, most likely. So if you give a young person, or it could be an older person who's just starting out, a guitar with fret ends that are so sharp that it's drawing blood, they're not going to know how to fix it, and they're just going to give up instantly. Um, other parts about this guitar were actually okay. The intonation was fine. The action's a little high. I happen to like my action a little bit high. There was a little too much forward bow in the neck, so I gave it a quarter twist with a truss rod wrench. A lot of people wouldn't know how to do that. Um, so really, it's really, really, really important that the entry-level guitars actually get a good setup. And of course, if you buy an expensive guitar, you want it to be set up right as well. But m I won't say most, but many people who are able to afford a nicer guitar have some experience, and some of that experience may give them the ability to make adjustments and corrections and file fret ends and adjust truss rods and set the action or do the intonation. So again, they got some of it right. Otherwise, overall, it's actually a nice guitar. The build quality seems to be really good. I have to laugh again at the hyperbole, the flamed maple top. If there's any flame in this maple, baby, yeah, there's no flame. Flameless. They should have called it the flameless maple top. But it actually does look nice. Um, and again, I understand it's a very, very, very inexpensive guitar. Um, but it does have some nice qualities. The satin finish on the neck is really nice. The tuners actually work fine. I mean, they're probably as cheap a tuners as you could possibly get. But they uh, they work fine. So, you know, once you get it dialed in, took a while, stretched the strings a few times. Controls seem okay. They're slightly recessed in the body, and there's a bit of a, a rub. No big deal. Switch seems to work fine. Um... I'm not a shredder. I'm guessing this is a 14 radius fretboard. Which again, many of my guitars have a 12, so what's the difference between 12 and 14? Not much. Um, the frets are a little scratchy. I don't bother to polish my frets. I just play them out. If you play enough, the scratchiness comes off. Um, but the point I was going to make is that I usually judge the quality of a guitar's tone by what it sounds like clean. And so I ran this through just like a Fender. I've got a modeling amp, a Fender amp with a little bit of delay and a little reverb. And it's actually very nice sounding. And then when you add some crunch to it, I mean, again, keep in mind. So now we're going to get to the end of the long-winded story. This guitar currently sells. This one doesn't because the blue one sold out, but they have a gray version of this. I think it's selling for like $189. If they would have handled the fret ends, if the fret ends would have been acceptable, that would be a reasonable, a reasonable price to pay for this guitar. I haven't used the, the trim bar because I don't use trim bars. Some people said it works okay. Other people said it was lousy. lousy. This is a Wilkinson-style tremolo, which I have no idea what that means, other than you've got adjustment points here. This is apparently to lock the string, I think. 
This is obviously your height adjustment, and then you adjust your intonation at the back, which is really nice. You don't have to weasel in this way. So that's a nice feature, but I didn't have to adjust the intonation because it seems just fine to me. Um, so anyways, back to what I was saying. So $189 for the gray version. I'm still in a state of semi-shock that I got this guitar brand new for $35. I bought two of them for a grand total of $71. I haven't pulled the other one out of the box yet. I already am imagining that it's going to need the same amount of work. I'm probably going to go back and spend another half hour on the fret ends to just clean them up even more. But as they are, it's comfortable. It's not sharp. There's a couple that sort of pop out and you can feel them, but boy, what a difference from when I pulled it out of the box. It was just... I mean, people talk about cheese grater. This thing could freaking grade steel. You could use this as a file. So, and I'm going to pull mono, uh, mono prices string. I'm going to show them their hyperbole in there description of this guitar and say, look, either do it or take it down, but don't be dishonest. Don't say that you did something when you didn't do it, because I think the final thing was, yes, straight out of the box, and you can play it on Friday night or at your worship service. Well, you know, hopefully the worship service isn't about stigmata, because there's going to be blood coming out of your fingertips, and they may think that you're like, uh, yeah, possessed or something, you know, it's Anyways, overall very satisfied. And again, the, the whole goal was I'm going to sell these guitars for a modest profit. I'm not going to gouge anyone. Um, you know, considering wh what I got it for, I'm just going to turn it around and sell it for, you know, 7500 bucks. Is that gouging? I don't know. Considering that I'm going to have to put about two hours worth of tech work into it, I think that's a fair price. But the market will decide because as they say... The worth of something is determined by what someone's willing to pay for it. So anyways, for the third and final time, I believe, it is February 28th. It is 2024. It's a Wednesday morning. It's warmer outside than it was yesterday. We're in the roller coaster months now. I think on Monday we were 48. I think yesterday we started the day out at zero. And today, I think we're pushing back up into the 40s. So, so yes, yeah, so this is a mono price. It is in Indio. It's called the Helix. And I guess it's their sort of, you know, I guess you would compare this guitar probably to like Ibanez guitars. And uh, But, yeah, for someone who wants a, a, a decent guitar, again, the fit and the finish on it seems to be just fine. I didn't go over it with a fine-tooth comb, but not, there's nothing glaring. But yeah, certain things make me laugh, and in the description, when I advertise, I'm going to take the flame out, because there is no flame. This is the flameless, they say that blue is the coolest flame, so yes, the color on this guitar is appropriate, because there's no flame. Anyways, thank you for joining us. I'm going to just, yeah, I'm not going to publish this video yet, because I'm just going to do part two with the second one. It'll be a lot quicker because I'm sure it's probably very similar in quality, and so I'll just go over it, and it looks identical to this, I'm assuming. So so we'll probably do that tomorrow. So we'll be back. Thank you very much. Welcome back, everybody. It is New Guitar Day Part 2. It's now a day later. It is that oddest of odd days in our calendar. It's leap year, so it's February the 29th, 2024. And as mentioned yesterday, this is the second of two guitars that I purchased. Identical guitars. <coughs> Couldn't resist. At the price of $35 and 60 something cents delivered to my front door. And as you can see on the box, I'm guessing just based on what I see that the company's name is Monoprice. And Monoprice sells Indio guitars. So this is a Monoprice Indio guitar. And again, this is the Helix model. It's sort of the entry-level budget shredder-style guitar, sort of modeled after Ibanez-style guitars. With the, uh, I believe it has a 14-inch radius fretboard, which I have no idea how that benefits the shredder, since I'm not a shredder. But uh, just so we can see, here's yesterday's guitar right here. And uh, overall, it turned out to be pretty nice. 
its weakest issue was the absolute abysmal sharp fret ends, which I'm expecting an identical experience here. Hopefully that's the only issue. And we also had a broken buckle on the strap of the gig bag. So I've notified Monoprice. And we'll see what they want to do to this. I'm guessing, yes, this is called the buckle right here, which I learned yesterday. So I need to get a new buckle. These seem to be in fine shape. So without further ado, we shall free the helix. And it looks to be an identical situation to yesterday. Truss rod, rod tool, a trim bar. I just know those fret ends are going to just be absolutely brutal. Which again, I won't repeat the whole story, but it just makes me laugh because they go out of their way to their marketing department to extol the virtues of the master luthier who hand does. Well, this one's got a little more flame on it. I call the other one my flameless model. Because it had no flame at all. This one does have a hint of flame. Again, do these things matter? No. But when they go out of their way, it's very interesting because the other one had no no plastic on the middle pickup. So it may or may not have been a return. Oh yeah, sharp is just you could kill someone with this neck. So that's obviously an issue. It needs immediate attention. One guy who got one of these mentioned that his neck pocket was really bad. This one feels good. Switches. These tend to rub. I don't know why. They're sort of recessed in the body. A little bit of smuts there. We don't charge extra for the smuts. Yeah, this actually has some nice flame on it. So this is the flame model. This one has some flame. And they have the most interesting serial numbers. They're like buried in the... That feels good. Yeah, it's got some... Some little wing dings on it. Again, for $35, what are you going to do? Um, action on this one. Seems acceptable. Yeah, so I'm going to go run this through the... Uh, the fret shredder. It's funny because the the fret marker on the other one has the exact same thing. It takes sort of a quarter moon. Um, oh, these are just absolutely pitiful. That guy should be ashamed of himself. That master luthier, he needs to get another job because he definitely completely failed. But the good news is it can be fixed pretty quickly. So I'm going to set about fixing that and then give this guitar a whirl and we will be back. And welcome back everybody. It is now about 10 minutes after 5 o'clock and it is that strange day in our calendar, February the 29th, 2024. And we are back with our final analysis. So as you can see, no, do not adjust your television set. You do not have double vision. You're gazing upon the beauty of two. Indio by Monoprice Helix electric guitars. Again, I'm ashamed to say that I bought two of these because the price was just too ridiculous. And here's the pleasant surprise. This is not the type of guitar that I would go for at all. This is certainly more of a modern guitar. Um, I'm very much into the uh, traditional the Fenders and the Gibsons and the Gretches. And I really like these guitars. And as I said yesterday, one of the benchmarks for me for a guitar is how does it sound clean? Because most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time if a guitar sounds good clean, then you add some drive to it and some, you know, some bottom end and a little bit of distortion and they usually sound pretty good. And this guitar doesn't disappoint in that way at all. It sounds excellent clean, just a, just a touch of chorus touch of reverb, just the slightest touch of delay. 
position number two, three, and four, clear as a bell, just beautiful. And then you add some drive to it, and it's just got some nice bottom end and crunch. And again, these are inexpensive, aka cheap guitars. I think these guitars, their street price is about $189. And again, as I mentioned yesterday, they blew these out, the blue ones, for if you bought more than one, I got these for $35 each, brand new, shipped to my front door with a gig bag. My two complaints, and they're minor, they're not for me as much as they are for the target audience for this guitar. As I said yesterday, I have never, and it turned out to be true for the second guitar as well, I have never bought a brand new guitar that had fret ends that were as sharp as these. Freaking lethal weapons. If I would have pushed my hand into the side of the fretboard when I was checking, I would have drawn blood. <laughs> that sharp. I spent about 45 minutes on each of these guitars with a file just to bring them into the acceptable range. I could spend another half hour to 45 minutes if I wanted to make them absolutely butter smooth, but they don't need to be butter smooth for me. So that was an absolute fail and it's even more of a fail because of their freaking ad copy and the hyperbole and again for those who are listening and your eyes are rolling in your head right now but that they have the nerve to actually publish on the page for this guitar that their master luthier hand files each fret so that there's no sharpness, that these are playable right out of the box. And again, I know I'm beating a dead horse, but that's just really, really, talk about over-promising and under-delivering, just really bad. And if you are a young guitar player and you don't have a file and you don't know how to file fret ends, you're going to be seriously disappointed when you pull this thing out of the box and you go, I can't play this. So I'm going to try and talk to someone at Monoprice who has some influence and either encourage them to A, take down that bullshit because it's false advertising, or B, get your luthier back and get him to work, or her, whoever it is, and send these out like in decent condition. And then the other thing that both these guitars suffer from, minor, but there's binding on the uh, volume and the tone control. These are sort of recessed down in the body a little bit. Is it a big deal? No, I don't, you know, once I set my tone and my volume, I'm usually, I stay there. But it's a small detail, and the devil is in the details, as they say. And the uh, the other hyperbole is the flame maple top. One of these, I don't know which one, this one is the flameless maple top. There's no flame at all, and this one has just the lightest hint of flame if you hold it exactly right in the right amount of light. Again, big deal? No. No deal. Doesn't matter. It's more of the principle. I don't know if these were returns, if these were seconds. They were advertised as brand new. A couple of things that made me suspicious. The plastic is missing off of the middle pickup on this guitar. And the plastic on the truss rod cover on that guitar is like severely peeled back like somebody removed the truss rod cover. This needed a quarter turn for a little more, a little less relief. This one was just fine. Um, I broke a string right out of the box on this one, so I had to put a new E string on it. it uh, I was tuning it up and it just went chink and it was gone. So it has a new string on it. They say that they use the Adario XLR coated strings. I can say that unlike many budget guitars, I did not get the black finger syndrome. The frets could be polished a little better, but again, I'm cheap and I'm lazy, so I just play out the scratchiness on the frets. I would never have an occasion to use the Wilkinson style trim, so I have no idea how well it works or doesn't work. A few people in some videos, some work better than others. Um, if you were just to use, you just do a light shimmer, you probably would stay in tune. I did put graphite in the slots of the nut, so if I ever did that. But surprisingly enough, my original plan was to sell both of these, and I may very well end up keeping one of them, at least for a while, because again, I really like the way it sounds. And I like the way it plays. And now that I've invested some of my sweat equity into getting the... Uh, edges of the frets in decent shape, 
I'm more inclined, but I am going to let them know that I was not happy to get guitars like that, not at all. And it wasn't just your typical fret sprout with change of season and humidity. These were just really, really, really poorly finished. And they had burrs on it that, that yeah, literally. Again, my nickname for the neck of these guitars is Lethal Weapon. If you use this as a weapon, you'd hurt people. So, anyways, we're going to wrap this up because I'm sure you're starting to go into a coma. We have another new guitar coming. It wasn't a planned guitar. It was another... What a deal. I really, really, really like my Gear It Les Paul with P90 pickups. And they've been advertising, they've now got a thin line Telecaster that has an interesting combination of a humbucker pickup in the bridge that's coil split and a P90 in the neck position. And I just, yeah, and they're selling them for 88 bucks. Ship to your door. Their gig bag is not quite as substantial as Indio, but they, it comes with a gig bag, and their little goodie pack is much more substantial than anyone else. So yeah, it's inexpensive stuff, but you get a tuner, you get a pack of strings, you get a decent cord, not like the crappy cords that most companies send you, and then, you know, your truss rod tools and some picks and stuff. We'll see. You know, again, the good thing about Amazon is, is that if you don't like it, you can send it back. I try not to be abusive of that policy. Um, and I'm planning on keeping it, and if I do and I don't like it, I'll just sell it to someone else. Because what I don't like, someone else may very well like. You know, I don't ever, you know, I don't believe everyone's operating off the same, yeah, set of reality. So, and that's a beautiful thing, because I sold another guitar today, and I may or may not have mentioned this before, but as much as I like getting guitars, I really enjoy selling them. There's nothing like someone coming over and they've seen a guitar you're advertising and it's exactly what they're looking for and they want it and it's at a price that they want to pay and they leave happy and that's just a great feeling so that's what this is sort of all about and it gives me a chance to try different guitars and like I said I never in a million years I don't even look at guitars like this this is sort of an Ibanez again you know uh, shred kind of guitar uh, it's not my thing at all, and yet, surprise, surprise, it's really a nice guitar, and it feels good, and it plays nice, nice body contours on it, and and these are interesting, too, because it has, you know, I wouldn't call it an arch top, but, I mean, there's like a step up there that's sort of an interesting from a visual point of view. So, we will be back next Monday with the Garrett Thin Line Telecaster, but till then... Hope everyone's doing well. I hope you did something unusual and special today because, again, this day only happens once every four years. We sign off February 29th, 2024. See you next time.